Hey everyone, in this installment of Cosmetology 101, I will be discussing four different types of chemical hair bonds in the hair. Of course, this will be an in-depth look at the chemistry and science of hair, but it will also give you a better understanding as to why your hair behaves the way that it does when we use water, products, or even chemical processes. First, we know that hair is composed primarily of the protein keratin, specifically 97%. Keratin is made up of amino acids containing hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and sulfur. Within the cortex layer of the hair, these amino acids are formed together in a chain called a polypeptide chain, or helix coil. These polypeptide chains contain four different types of bonds, which gives our hair its shape, elasticity, curl, and strength. I will briefly go into detail about each type of bond and how they work, as well as the effect that they have in our hair. The first type of bond that I want to discuss are hydrogen bonds. These are bonds formed between a hydrogen and oxygen atom through opposite electrical charge attraction. They are the weakest type of bonds in our hair but make up for about one third of our hair's strength. Hydrogen bonds are easily broken when water or heat is applied to the hair and are reformed when the hair is dried or cooled and locks the hair into its new shape. Changes in hydrogen bonds are considered a physical change that is only temporary. Next are salt bonds, also called sodium chloride bonds. These bonds are formed between oppositely charged amino acids, similar to hydrogen bonds. Though these bonds are abundant in the polypeptide chains, they are weak, making up for about one-third of the hair strength. Salt bonds are influenced by changes in pH. When alkaline solutions are placed on the hair, it causes the hair to soften, swell, and lift the cuticles. When more acidic solutions are placed on the hair, it causes the hair to harden, shrink, and encourages the cuticles to contract and close. This is the underlying concept that we think of when we think of products with hold. The products alter the pH of hair and help to set our hairstyles and give it its hold. Once the hair is dried and restored to its normal pH balance, the bonds are reformed and lock the hair in place. Changes in salt bonds are considered a physical change and is temporary as well. Now let's discuss disulfide bonds. There are fewer disulfide bonds than hydrogen or salt bonds, but they are stronger and account for another one-third of the hair's strength. These bonds are not affected by water or heat, but rather they are only broken by chemical processes, which includes hair color, lightener or bleach, permanent wave, or chemical relaxers. These bonds are reformed once the solutions have been rinsed out completely and neutralized with either a neutralizer or neutralizing shampoo. Changes in your disulfide bonds in your hair are considered a chemical change since it is through the result of chemical processes. Because of this, it is a permanent change, which means you cannot restore your disulfide bonds back to their original state after it has been altered. The previously three bonds that we discussed were all considered as side bonds, as these bonds connect and link multiple polypeptide chains together side by side. However, peptide bonds are different in that they link individual amino acids to form a single polypeptide chain, hence the name polypeptide. These are the strongest bonds in the hair. They are not altered by water, heat, pH, or chemical processes. However, these bonds will become weak and break when hair becomes overprocessed, especially when combining two types of chemicals that don't agree with each other, such as using lightener on relaxed hair. Alright y'all, here I am. This is Tiffany and Tiffany has been permed and she has gone through about maybe 15 color processes and as you can see, Tiffany is suffering from alopecia. Yes people, that's right. Even mannequins suffer from alopecia. Her hair is literally fried. 
and her hair has been shedding in clumps. Look at that. It's just falling out. It's still going. I didn't blow dry this. So yeah, these two chemicals are just not made to go together and this is what happens to your hair when you break the rules. So no perms, no relaxers, and no color people. Otherwise, you'll end up with this. Now that we've covered the four types of chemical bonds in hair, I want to give a short quiz to see just how much you really have been paying attention. The question is, how many types of bonds are broken when hair absorbs moisture? A, one, B, two, C, three, or D, four? Alrighty, got your answer? You sure? Most of you probably answered A, thinking hydrogen bonds, which are indeed broken by water as well as heat. However, the correct answer is actually B. Both the hydrogen and salt bonds break when hair absorbs water. Think about it. Hair's natural pH level is between 4.5 to 5.5, whereas pure water has a pH of 7, which is neutral but still more alkaline than hair. That is why your hair softens, swells, or frizzes when any type of moisture hits it. That's also why any type of water, whether it's in the atmosphere or in a spray bottle, has such a large impact on making hair frizz, curl up, or lose its shape or definition. Also, this is my personal deduction, but I also believe that is why trying to over moisturize your hair will eventually result in drying it out faster than you would if you only did it as often as your hair needs. Remember, when hair is wet with water, it swells, also opening up your hair's cuticles. To me, it's like trying to fill up a bucket with water while poking holes through the bottom. That has been my own personal observation with my hair and I just thought I'd share that. Also, one last thing I want to mention is heat damage. We hear about it, we see it, and some of us are unlucky enough to experience it firsthand. But what does heat damage have to do with the chemical bonds in hair? Well, the truth of the matter is that even though disulfide bonds, which are the strongest but fewest bonds, are not broken by heat, they can actually become permanently severed when your hair experiences excessive heat. The disulfide bonds are responsible for your hair's curl pattern, elasticity, and resilience. When you sever those bonds, your hair loses its curl, elasticity, and strength, similar to a relaxer. That is the science behind heat training, your natural hair as some people would call it. You're just breaking down your hair one disulfide bond at a time. Well, that's it for this segment. I don't want to overload you guys with too much information all at once, but I hope that this helps gives you a better perspective of your hair. As always, thanks so much for watching and be blessed. Bye.